Good morning, everyone. This is Dee Canup coming to you from Power in Unity Ministries. And I praise the Lord for the word that he gave me for you today to encourage your heart, moms, dads, children who have had parents go back on Christ, who have not have lost their love for their first love. <clears throat> I call, I, um, I, this is for you. This is for you this morning. He had me up at two o'clock this morning, giving me this word. I had heard some things yesterday and I was so busy trying to get some things done that it's, that I didn't get finished with it. So I couldn't even sleep. Finally, I got up at two o'clock and I, I began to listen to what he had to say. It is so important that we hear this. If you know anybody that's out of the ark of safety today, send this to them. Ask them to please read it. If they never read anything else, to please read this because God is after their heart today. If you want to know anything about us, go to our, our website, powerinunity.com. Uh, we have a place where you can actually write us your testimony or your prayer request if you want to. And um, anything you want to find out about us, it's on there. It's the beginnings. And uh, we thank God for it. But I wanted to get right into this word. It's so important. It's so important this morning that we hear what he has to say. Nothing passes God. Nothing passes God. Our God. So hear what he has to say. Holy Messiah. I, I, I've got to pray first. I've just got to pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yahweh. In the power of, a, of the Holy Ghost of God. In the authority of the name of Yeshua. We come before you and we come against that spirit that draws people away from the cross because of time lapse. Father, we ask you to give them revelation. We ask them to give you substance. We ask you to give them that drawing power. Holy Spirit, go out and bring them back in. Young people, you've been praying for your parents to go back to their first love. They're coming in. Parents, you have lost your children out there to drugs or sexual inactivity, activities or uh, sex slavery or whatever. God is going to bring them back in. My Lord and my God, they are finding out because he is showing them a shining star. Matole bakila mosiah. Mandalia sona moshakalai. Some of you are going to have open your front door and there they're going to stand asking you to forgive them coming back home hallelujah Moshandai. as your light shines to your parents one day they're going to see that star and they're going to come back to that first love so never give up hope jesus is our hope hallelujah and he abides within whether you're young or old we plead the blood of jesus that those drugs are or a, a miraculously leaving the body of those who have been who have been saturated with them in this world and draw them back to the one and only true living God who created them in his image his name is love we plead the blood of Jesus over every lost soul and over the body of Christ that they will stand tall and stand still and stand true for the one true almighty God who gave his son, who gave his life that we might have eternal life. Jesus, we thank you in advance. We praise you. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. And thank you. For the results we're going to see after this word goes forth and around this world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Now to get into the word. It is awesome. God's love is undying. His love is ever reaching. It's not like a band-aid that only expands so far and then it'll burst. It's forever reaching out hallelujah hear what he has to say when you, when you hear what he he has to say in the rhyme words then you're going to understand and, he, and after this there's a whole lot that he's got to say to you the beating i took that day broke the spirit of flesh and made a better way 
He spoke, he, he just wouldn't let that go. I kept hearing that all day yesterday, off and on. It, in fact, it was the night before. It seemed like, no, it was during a communion again. During a communion again, I heard these words and, and I'm, I'm, I went and I wrote them down and I said, what are you going to spit? And I didn't, I didn't hear anything else. But throughout the day, I kept hearing, hearing it off and on. So he's not through telling you and helping you to understand he has defeated the flesh. He has defeated the flesh. My Lord, are you my sequel or my higher? Listen to what he has to say and help me to keep myself quiet. The beating I took that day broke the spirit of flesh and made a better way. If you will allow the spirit to lead, you will not be deceived. I'm not going to say anything because he's already said it. Deception comes when from his words you refrain and you stop calling on Jesus' name. We know that the lust of the flesh, you know, is what draws us away. He says deception comes when his words you refrain and you stop calling on Jesus' name. What happens? Now seeing the world's view, you begin doing what you should not do partaking what the world has to offer no longer you're a priest and a king you become a pauper not talking about earthly wealth he's talking about heavenly wealth you lose your joy begin to wonder and fear you have now changed your gear like the prodigal son, the world had him in a bind for a season. He wondered and was blind. Then one day he opened his eyes, found himself in the pigsty. Saw his life, what a waste. Remembered his father had a place. Ooh, I love Oshanai. He said, Father, my, my father, with my father, I will make a deal. I will gladly work in his field. His father saw him coming when he met him, and he went and met him running. The son repented of his sin. His father gladly welcomed him in. What a story of God's love and the love of Christ and his outstretched arms. My Lord and my God, if you come with a repentant heart, there's no way he's going to turn you out. But he explained it. You'll find this story in Luke, the 15th chapter. All right, then he kind of goes just another little bit. He changes a little bit of tune here, and he says, If you have slipped in the world, your heart now spinning in a whirl, wondering how you got lost, from the fire of Pentecost. That's what happens. Jesus said, I stand my arms outstretched. Your soul in danger, I am ready to catch. Ooh, hallelujah. Repenting, you have come home. You are now one of my own. This is Jesus talking to you, not me. This is Jesus talking to you. He's compelling you to come back. Glory be to God. No longer you're bound. My peace you have found. Come sit at my table and dine on my heavenly bread and new wine. I say to one, I say to all, come, refresh yourself in me, and I will set you free. My Lord and my God, hallelujah to the Lamb. I want to read through that one more time, and then there's one more four section. It changes from Jesus talking to you to the Father talking to you. Hallelujah. You're going to see that. But let me just go through it because it is so simple and yet so powerful and so revealing. The devil wants you to think he's got you. You, There's no way back. You've done too much. You've been out here too long. Uh-uh. He's a liar and the father of all lies. He knows the truth for he was created by him. Not in this fashion. He was created to be a beautiful uh, uh, archangel. But he fell from grace. So what I'm saying is he knows God. He knows the Lord Jesus Christ. 
but he has no truth in him. None. So when you hear that negativity, you got to know he's a liar. It ain't God talking to you. How about that? My mother turned over in her grave hearing me say ain't. <laughs> Ooh, she loved real English, good English. I want to reread this, but I don't want us to get off the subject and I don't want us to get our mindset somewhere else. Let this go down into your spirit. You who are out there wondering, how, where do I go now? What do I do? How many times might you out there try to commit suicide and you couldn't do it? You think that was the Holy Spirit pulling your arm back saying, no, it's not your time. There's a Christ out there who's pulling you, who's wooing you back to him. My Lord and my God. Oh, hallelujah. The beating I took that day broke, broke, broke the spirit of flesh and made a better way. If you allow the spirit, his spirit to lead, you will not be deceived. Deception comes when from his word you re we refrain and you stop calling on Jesus' name. Now seeing the world's view, you begin doing things you shouldn't do. Partaking what the world has to offer, no longer you're a priest and king, but you have become a pauper. You lost your joy being begin to wonder and fear. You have now changed gears. Like the prodigal son, the world had him in a bind for a season. He wondered and was blind. Then one day he opened his eyes, found himself in the pigsty. Saw his life, what a waste. Remembered his father had a place. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He said, with my father, I will make a deal. I will work in his field. <clears throat> but how did the father respond? Read it in Luke, the 15th chapter. His father saw him coming, went to meet him running. Ooh, hallelujah. The son repented of his sin. His father gladly welcomed him in. And the story goes that he put him on a robe and a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. And he began to have, he said, we're calling for our feast, but that son which was lost has now been found. That child, that parent that is lost has now been found. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on what you see in the natural, but lean on him. And he will direct your path. If, Jesus says, you have slipped into the world and your heart now is spinning in a whirl, wondering how you lost the fire of Pentecost. I remember there was a time in my life, it was around the age of 21, I had had some multi-things happen in my life from my very early childhood of two years old. And I had found Christ, and I was, I, I didn't have the Holy Spirit, but I was on fire. And at the age of, was it 18, 21, I, I lost that, I lost that hope. I lost that hope. And within a year, I believe it was maybe a year and a half, it was like I could feel the wooing of the Holy Spirit. One day he came to me and he says, you're either going to, you got to make a choice. It's me or the world. I'll withdraw my spirit, but you have to make a choice. It scared me and I made the choice for Christ. And in uh, amazing supernatural things happened that brought me back. I knew of a little church in this city I was living in. It was an assembly of God, and the pastor's name was produced. Now, that is an unusual name. It may not be in that country, but it is here in this country. And I, 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 I dialed nine, I dialed uh, six, what is it? Um, information. 311, I think it was at the time. And, and I asked them, I said, I know you, you don't, you're, they're not even in Winslow. The closest place they was was 60 miles away. And I said, I don't think you can help me, but I'm asking you if you by any chance know the pastor's name of the, of the church in Winslow. 
that is a pastor over the Assembly of God. They, oh, yeah, I know his name is Producer. Now, how is our operator 60 miles away going to remember that the, the pastor's name of Assembly of God in the, my city called Producer? That's God. So I got him on the line. I called. He said, you want me to come over? I said, it's not really necessary. But I said, I really need prayer. I have to make my decision for Christ right now. But they did. He and his wife came over and knelt with me. And I received, I, I repented of my life and uh, received Christ back in my heart. Like I should have been, the fire of Pentecost came back in. And I've never lost that fire of Pentecost since. That fire has grown and grown through every trial test, every mountain I've had to climb, every river I've had to cross. God has brought me through to the other side and taught me through each one of them. So listen, if you have slipped into the world, your heart now spinning in a world, and mine was spinning all the time, knowing I was wrong, I was just mad, I was angry because I couldn't, didn't get what I wanted. God has his way of drawing everybody to him. Hallelujah. But it didn't come my way. It didn't come my way. And and I was devastated and very angry at God. But I was not foolish enough to say, depart from me and never come back. Never foolish enough. If you have slipped into the world, your heart now spinning in a whirl, wondering how you lost the fire of Pentecost. Jesus says, I stand with my arms outstretched, your soul in danger. I am ready to catch my Lord and my God. Repenting, you have now come home. You are now one of my own, my Lord and my God. No longer bound, my peace you have found. Come, sit at my table and dine on my heavenly bread and new wine. I say to you one and I say to all, come, refresh yourself in me and I will set you free. This is Jesus talking to you. If you are a prodigal, you need to come home, my Lord and my God. But now hear what the Father has to say. It does not matter what you have done. If you will run to my son, he will wash away your sin and give you joy and peace within. Simple four lines of word the father said. If you, uh, it, he said, doesn't matter what you've done. If you will run to my son. He will wash away your sin and give you joy and peace within. And we know the word of God says in John, the chapter, chapter 14, verse 26, I believe he says he is, is his peace that he gives to us. Not as the world gives, but his peace. And in John 15, it says, I think it's 16, 15 and 16. He says, my joy, I give to you his joy. The world can't take that away. Joy is not happiness. Happiness is like from an event or an emotion uh, because of a situation that has happened. That's the word happiness. It doesn't mean the same as joy. Joy is eternal. It's something that that is in and comes out. Malo kosende. It is given from God. Malo bushende Messiah. Now, that was his word. And I'm, I'm telling you, God is on his throne. Hallelujah. What I couldn't get away from when I kept hearing those first two lines, the beating that I took that day broke the spirit of flesh and made a better way. My mind kept going to the word love. The word love radiated in me all night. I couldn't sleep. I had to get up and I had to begin to write. I couldn't get away from it. We are made in their image, the image of love, my Lord and my God. God the Father in 1 John 4, 8, it says God is love. Where is Jesus from? He's from the Father. Christ is love. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God that hovered over the world. He is love. The Trinity is love. 
Do you hear what I'm saying? And he stands with outstretched arms to us today, just like he did in the days when Jesus walked the earth, even before that. Love drew Abraham when there wasn't even a Bible to look at. It drew him into a land he didn't know. If you will go, the Lord said, that two-letter word, if you will go, I will make you a father of many nations. And it wasn't until he was a 100 years old that he saw that come to pass. So if God said it, it will happen. He is love. Here is words. The Bible says to put on love. Now, who is love? Father God, Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, they are love. Love, he says, to put it on in Colossians 3.14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Who walk in perfection? Perfection in this earth, it was Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. Galatians 3.27 says, For as many of you that were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, put on love. Hallelujah. In Ezekiel, it, God said to eat the word. Who is the word? John 1 says the word was in the beginning. The word was with God. The word was God and he was with him in the beginning. Nothing was made that was made without him. He says, and he said to me, son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with the scroll that I have given you. So I ate it and it was in my mouth like honey is sweetness. The word is like honey to your soul and to your spirit. Why does God say, allow the spirit to lead and you will not be deceived because he will lead you in the right directions into perfection with Christ. Hallelujah, Messiah. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Your words was found and I ate them and your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. What did he say in John the 15th chapter? I give you my joy. What did Jeremiah say? Your words were found and I ate them. I put them in me. Hallelujah. What did he say at the beginning here? Hallelujah. Deception comes when you refrain from his word and you stop calling on that word. My Lord and my God. But if he, when he found the word, he ate the word and your word was to me joy and rejoicing of my heart. Oh, my Lord. In Proverbs, it says that we are to guard this heart because out of it comes the issues of life. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. And John was told to eat the little book that was in the hand of the angel. Revelation 10, 9. So I went to the angel and said to him, give me the little book. It was someone that looked like the son of God that was saying this. And he said to me, take it and eat it and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be sweet as honey in your mouth. So John was given revelation of things to come that he didn't want to see. And he was not allowed to reveal. Some things were revealed and that is called to me. I call that the love letter of God revelation because he tells us about all this stuff that's coming past. He knows his enemy, and there's nothing his enemy can do. But God said, my word, stand on it, eat it, wear it about you, put it on like you put on a coat in the wintertime, button it up so that it, nothing can get loose. Put on the word of God. Put on Christ. Put in the Holy Spirit, and the devil can't win. My Lord and my God. Ooh, hallelujah. 
put on Christ in love. The book called the Bible is filled with love. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. Try to make sure I don't lose my place here. So, he says to you, if you have slipped into the ditch, come home. Put on the love of Christ. How do you describe love? I'm going to give you just a few ways. There's so much more. And I'm sure when I finish giving you what I've decided, I had to just stop. I've got six pages here. I had to just stop. But I'm sure you can pick up your pen and begin to write more and more and more, just like he did for me. Praise be unto God. Love is kindness, goodness, joy, peace, rest, long-suffering, patience, gentleness. Love is faithful and gracious, magnificent, full of grace. Love never fails. Love is all fullness, abundance, overflowing. Love is completeness, always bubbling up and spilling over. Hallelujah. Giving it away. The more you give away, the more he pours in. Love That's God. That's Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit I'm talking. When I say love or I say him or I say he, it is love speaking to you. Love is awesome. Love alters our our course, changes this to that suddenly and quickly, covers all, knows all, redeems all. Love is magnificent and glorious and amazing and profound and beautiful and wonderful. Love is God, and God is love. Love is righteousness and holiness, purity and undefiled. Love is all-powerful and all-authority. Love is glorious and marvelous, almighty, wonderful, magnificent. Love is the fulfillment of everything beautiful, full of light. Love is greatness and all glory. Does this describe your God? Hallelujah. Love has no boundaries or limits. It reaches throughout the universes. Love reaches to the highest mountain top and to the lowest pits of hell. Love sees all, hears all, knows all. God is love and love is God. Love creates It's supernatural. It never stops, never ending. Love is the reason, then the purpose. It is eternal. Love stretches and never breaks. It is everlasting. Love always is reaching out and never pulling back. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Ooh, Gloria, my Sunday. Love creates and never destroys. Love heals and never wounds. Love always picks up but never pulls down. Love is eternal and supernatural. Love sanctifies, builds up, and satisfies. Love is revealing God to us. Love is backing down so someone else can move forward. Love is contentment wherever you are or whatever situation you might be in. Love is trusting and caring. Love does not depend on our feelings or our emotional. It is God in us. When before we were born in the womb of your mother, you were in the spirit of God. It came and was in you from the day of conception. You can't get away from it. It was built into you from the beginning. Praise God. It's what the devil tries to hide from you, what I'm telling you today. Love is so powerful, it can turn the darkest night into the brightest day. Love can lift you to the highest mountain from the lowest valley. Love can cause you to swim the deepest oceans or walk through the hottest fires without the smell of smoke. 
Love penetrates through the thickest of walls and defeats all the giants in the land. Love is God and God is love. He is always with us wherever we go, wherever we might be. Love has no big eyes and little use. Love spans the eternal universes. Love destroys the evil wherever it is. Love always wins. Love has always been and always will be. For love is God and God is love. Let me repeat this. God, love has no little eyes or big use. Let me give you a revelation of love. You, that dope addict that can't even pick himself up and move around because he's just put some more of that poison into his vein. He's in ragged, dirty, filthy clothes. He sold his body to get the drugs, him or her. The love of God is as strong for him as it is for those who serve him. Those big, what we got, the, the well-known, let me just say the well-known in our world today. You can see the love radiate off of them. And, but God's love for them is no greater than God's love for that prostitute who sold her body to get drugs to that child, the, those people, those people that sell children into sex slavery, who actually uh, sacrifice children. Those souls are, are re not redeemable. Who, who sacrifice children and drink their blood. There is, they're not redeemable. They've sold their soul to hell, to the devil. But God's love, if they were born of a woman, God's love, if they were born of a woman, you hear what I'm saying? If they were born of a woman, God's love was there. And his love is matchless. Those who cry out Christ to the world and are well known around this world. He doesn't love them any more than he loves every soul that's ever been birthed from a woman. That's love. It doesn't have big eyes and little use. He, he is, and he can't change who he is. Praise his holy name. That is a revelation. You say, well, God loves because they, no, not because they did, they do for him. He doesn't love them more. They receive more from him. They, they see into the heart of God and they, they receive, but he doesn't love them anymore because he can't. That's who he is. That would change him. Do you understand? I hope you understand. That's what he showed me one day. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they, or born of a woman, they conceived in the body of a woman and were born. They they are, I love them as much as I love you. Hear what I'm saying this morning. This God is so vast. He's unbelievable. Praise be unto God. I'm trying to see. I think I've got a page. I don't know. Anyway, let's go on. I've got plenty to hear. How do we describe love? We just tried a whole page full. You can't, but when you begin to describe love, which is God, it, and I've got it all written in capital letters, it just keeps growing and growing. There is no beginning and no end. It is and will always be, for love is God and God is love. And he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's all completeness. He's all eternal. How can a man with a pen or thought describe that? When you begin, you have just begun, for it is and always will be. God is love. Love is, and nothing equals or sits beside love, but 
his son called love. Nothing can compare to it. When we allow it to consume everything evil, it gives us eternal peace and rest. It consoles and conceals and grants knowledge and wisdom and revelation. This is what those who have not received Christ don't have. It's not that they they lack God loving them as the prodigal son. He, he didn't have to do anything. He was just coming because God was forever looking for him to come back. And he ran to him and threw his arms around him and welcomed him home. All he had to do was repent. That was it. The love was already there. And just when you think you have said it all, love is has a love is another word or another thought or a, comes to mind and something else about love. Love makes a way where there seems to be no way. Love brings peace in a storm and joy in the valley and hope in every step we take. Love is our strength and our hope and our wisdom our joy and our peace. Love causes us to trust when we cannot see the end. Love melts the darkest shadows with the stream of glorious light. Love gives hope to the faint, rescues the perishing, and gives a helping hand. Love loves the unlovable and sees beyond the circumstance to the need. Love is the ending of all things and the beginning. Love allowed Jesus to shine through our eyes with a smile or a word, giving hope to those we cross our paths with. Love sees beyond the smile that hides a pain of someone else. Love brings confidence to the doubting. Love brings wisdom and through love, knowledge grows. Love overcomes all fear. Love causes the things that were held you back to disintegrate right before your eyes. Praise God. Love is so powerful and magnificent. Love cannot be divided, added, or multiplied. It is, and all of that, it is. Love is the vastness of all the universe's time, dominion, and space, which has no beginning and no ending. He, love, is like an astronaut, weightless in space. He is like the rain that washes and cleanses. He is like snow that kills the root of sin and causes new life to begin. He is the breath of life in us. He is love, and God is love. Love is like is not like an actor. He is real. We may not see, can see him physically, but we can touch his heart. He is always watching over us, for God is love, and love is God. You cannot separate love from God because he is not the God of love. He is love. Plain as day, 1 John 4, 8. God, love never fails, cannot be measured, holds the universe in the palm of his hand. He is holiness, purity, all goodness and joy. He is the full, full of mercy and grace for he is love and love is God. My Lord and my God. Just a few more. Love does not judge. Love does not care what color you are or where you came from, whether it's upstairs or downstairs. Love does not care what clothes you wear or what color you have in your hair, whether you are, are tall or short. Love sees beyond the outward to the inner part of your heart's core. Love does not care if you are flowing with this world's good or dried as the desert. Rich or poor, God is love and love is God. 
Love does not condemn, it mends. Love is not slow, but is mighty to rescue the perishing. Love penetrates the deepest sorrows and replaces it with the deepest of his peace. Love saturates, covers, and protects. Love is God, and God is love. If love were a plumber, it would flush out every pipe if love was electrician, it would light your whole house. If love were a geologist, it would plant your feet in the solid rock. Ooh, hallelujah, If love was a jeweler, it would shine like the most brilliant diamond, glow like a dazzling green emerald, have the fire of a yellow tro topaz, the brightness of a blue sapphire, or the fiery fieriness of a red ruby. If love were a fisherman, it would be the pearl of great price. If love were a farmer, it would plow up the dead ground and plant new seed of wheat that would bend in the gentle breeze. If love were a banker, it would be all the wealth of heaven and earth. If love were the maid or a custodian, they would cleanse every corner of your heart. For God is love, and love is God. Is he amazing or what? He's calling to you, prodigal. You who step back. Love is calling. It's reaching out. God is the creator of all, and in him we live and breathe. Take a moment. Breathe in a deep breath and let it out slow. That's the breath of God in you. He knows all, sees all, hears all. You cannot hide from him, conceal anything from him, run away from him. He is everywhere, shining through the darkest times and healing every wound. Love is always stretching and reaching out for you. Even waiting to pull you towards himself, ever waiting to pull you towards himself. Love is more powerful or more and more mighty than any created thing. For God is love and love is God. <clears throat> love impacts, crushes, pulls down strongholds. And it releases, radiates, breaks through, crushes through brick walls. Hear what he's saying. Love impacts, crushes, pulls down every stronghold. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. Releases, radiates, breaks through, crashes through brick walls. Love is like a freight train without brakes. It's like a jet plane riding in the sky. I love you. Come and drink my wine and eat my bread. Relax in my river of life. Holy my God, am I lasonera mahaya. I want to repeat that one section one more time. God is love. Love impacts, crashes down, pulls down on your stronghold. It releases and radiates, breaks through every, crashes through every brick wall. Love is like a freight train without brakes. It's like a jet plane riding in the sky. I love you. Come and drink my wine and eat my bread. Relax in my river of life. He's calling. He's calling. Love nullifies stress and brings satisfying peace and rest. Love grants wisdom and knowledge, bringing understanding of the God we serve. That's the difference between that person who's selling children for sex and those who speak the word of God to the nations to win the lost. That's the difference. He brings knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the God they serve. 
Love reaches to the poorest person living on the street, to the richest living in earthly mansions. Love sees no difference between the poor and the rich. Love is like a bath washing off the old and refreshing the soul, giving new life to the body you are living in. Love pulls up everything. Pulls, pulls up and never pushes down. Love plows up the foul ground and fertilizes the new. Ooh, hallelujah. Love is the wonderment of the eagles flying and the bumblebee buzzing and the hummingbird's wings moving faster than the wind. You hear this? These things are impossible. I heard a scientist say one time, a bumblebee flying is impossible. Possible. But with God, all things are possible. Love is the wonderment of an eagle flying. The beauty of an eagle flies above every storm. The bumblebee buzzing, the hummingbird's wings moving so faster than the wind. Love is a palm tree bending low during a storm as if it was bowing to its God. Love is feeling like he has wrapped a warm blanket all around you. Praise be unto God during your deepest valley. Love mends, repairs, and refreshes. Love glows in the darkness like the noonday sun. Love flows like a river that is never ending. Love is the wind blowing through your hair on a warm summer day. Love is joy in the midst of heartbreak. Love is comfort when you feel shipwrecked. Love is the calm when the world is in chaos. Love soothes in the center of a storm. Says Love says all is good because I am in charge. Love assures you when you don't understand. Love completes you for love is God and God is love. Love is a hand stretching down when you're falling. Love picks you up when you have fallen. Love does not crush you, but picks you up when you are weak. Love is a melody and a song in the night. Love is a tender hug and a gentle smile or a kind word. Love brings joy to the sad, peace to the hurting heart. Love is God and God is love. Love is everywhere in the rain, the snow, the wind, and the sunshine. Love is the calm, the peace, the comfort during a storm or the loss of a loved one. Love replaces health for sickness, blessing for stress, laughter for mourning, gladness for sadness. Love gives you a song when it seems that all is wrong. Bears repeating. All of this bears repeating. He is so marvelous in the way he describes himself. And there are so many more ways. I have probably 26 weight pages of how, maybe not quite that many. When you type it up, it's not near that. It's, it's, it's a lot. Let me tell you, it's a lot. It could be um, that he gave me, just gave me sitting there. Write this down. So I know that you can find many more ways to add to this. Love is a tender hug a gentle smile, or a kind word. Love brings joy to the sad and peace to the hurting heart. Love is God and God is love. Love is everywhere in the rain, the snow, the wind, and the sunshine. I know this is longer, but I can't help it. It's God and you, you need to receive it. Love is the calm, peace, and comfort during a storm, the loss or the loss of a loved one. Love replaces health for sickness, blessing for stress, Laughter for mourning, gladness for sadness. Love brings you a song when all seems wrong. And the last um, paragraph, love reveals truth in the midst of lies and deception, wrong from right. Love excels, excels, penetrates, and regenerates. Love redeems. Love is bringing hope to the hopeless, a warm meal to the hungry, water to the thirsty and a blanket for the cold and shoes for the homeless. Love is our strength, our courage to march against the current of life and stand tall for truth and love. Love 
listens, listens to a hurting heart, comforting them. Love empowers you to do the impossible when man says you cannot. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. This is what love is, just in a few words. Love reveals truth in the midst of lies and deception. Wrong from right. Love excels, penetrates, and regenerates. Love redeems. Love is bringing hope to the hopeless, a warm meal to the hungry, water to the thirsty, blanket to the cold, and shoes for the homeless. Love is our strength and our courage to march against the currents of this world and stand tall for truth. Love listens to a hurting heart, comforting them. Love empowers you to do the impossible when man says you cannot. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. What is love? Love is God. If you have slipped into the world, your heart now spinning in a whirl, wondering how you lost the fire of Pentecost, Jesus says, I stand with my arms outstretched, your soul in danger, I am ready to catch. Repenting, you have come home and now you are one of my own. No longer bound, my peace you have found. Come sit at my table and dine on my heavenly bread and new wine. I say to one as I say to all, come refresh yourself in me and I will set you free. And then the father chimes in and says, it does not matter what you've done. If you will run to my son, he will wash your, away your sin and give you joy, his joy and peace with him. I can't get away from this this morning. I know it's been longer than normal and I, I can't apologize for it. No, I can't. I'm sorry. If you don't know him, if you have gone back into the world, God is talking to you. Prodigal. Whether you be an adult or whether you be a child or whether a teenager, it doesn't matter. Come back. He's calling you. His arms are outstretched for you. He loves you. All you have to say is, I forgive me. Come into my heart. Refresh me once again. Fill me. Mold me again to the image you too would have. Every ministry is different. You are called to a ministry. Everybody's called. Receive him today. His joy. You know, everything you did, you slipped back into is gone. There's no condemnation in you anymore for whosoever is in Christ has eternal life. Gotta go. I love you so much. Pass this on. It's so important to reach the world, that prodigal child, that prodigal adult, that prodigal teen, Christ, for his soul to be redeemed. I love you. God loves you so much more.